Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be checking out the Isheen Novice 3 ready to fly package. The idea of this kit is to have absolutely everything you need to get in the air at an affordable price. Previously on the channel I reviewed the Novice 1 and Novice 2 ready to fly packages but they both fell short when it came to the included controller and goggles. In fact I advised Isheen that the only way they were going to sell any of them would be to release the models as a bind and fly which I believe they have now done. But the Novice 3 comes with the EV800 box goggles which are known to be a fairly decent budget goggle however they are not to be confused with the more expensive EV800Ds. So they don't have a dual antenna a diversity system for a better video signal and they don't have a built-in DVR which I think is really important to have as a beginner because if you lose your model then you don't have a recording of where it landed. You couldn't easily add a DVR either because there's no AV out socket only AV in. The screen's aspect ratio is stuck in 16 by 9 which isn't too bad but the model that the package comes with has a 4 by 3 camera so the image will always be stretched horizontally. The goggles battery is an internal 2000mAh 1S LiPo which should give you a long run time but it will take 3.5 hours to fully charge and after a year or so the battery will eventually need replacing because LiPos do wear out over time and you would have to take it apart to do that. On the upside, the goggles have a good enough resolution of 800 by 400. They're also set to the correct channel out of the box. And the fitment to the face is known to be decent for most Western faces, although that will differ from person to person. And it's a fairly long goggle, meaning that most people won't get any eye strain from them. Although if you require reading glasses, then these won't be for you because your eyes have to focus in close. And glasses won't fit over the faceplate either. I have seen people modify them so that glasses can fit but it's not something you should have to do in my opinion. The goggles can be repurposed as well because you can change the band and channel number so you can either fly another model with them or slide the faceplate out and use them as a monitor with a tripod. So the goggles aren't the best but at least you can use them unlike the previous novice packages. On appearance, the controller looks like the iRange multi-protocol transmitter, which would have been a more future-proof investment. However, it seems like they've just bought or copied the design and put a bespoke version of OpenTX on there without the multi-protocol chip installed, so you can only bind to FR Sky D8 receivers. The package comes with two 450mAh 3S LiPos, however, you can buy a Fly More package which comes with six LiPos, so if you don't have any other batteries for the transmitter then you can plug in one of the included lipos into the balance port on the back which leaves you with only one lipo for the model. The transmitter comes pre-bound to the model out of the box but if you want to bind to a different model oddly you don't do it through OpenTX instead you have to hold down the exit button while turning the transmitter on which causes the Ishin logo to flash red. You can use the multiple model memory, however each model that you bind to will work on any other model memory. So if you want to reuse the transmitter with something else, then make sure you have selected the correct model, otherwise any settings that are different may cause unwanted results. I've converted this one to mode 1 if you're confused why the throttle stick is on the other side and just like the eye range gimbals they don't center properly causing the model to drift when you let go of the sticks. You can get around this by adding some RC deadband in beta flight but even then the gimbals still feel really loose and cheap. Everything is set up for the included model so I haven't changed anything although every time you turn the transmitter on it always says that there is a switch in the wrong position so you have to press the exit button to get rid of that. You see it's something as small as that that could ground a complete novice so it would be hard for me to recommend this kit without at least having some knowledge of how things work. SWA is a three position switch, however it only shows up as a two position switch in beta flight and that one arms the model in the middle position. The switch on the left also acts as a two position switch and is set up as a lost model alarm. 
Then the top right shoulder switch is a three position switch and in the back position it puts the model in acro mode but without air mode so the props won't instantly spool up because motor stop is turned on. However it isn't exactly a beginner mode. The middle position is angle mode without air mode which should be the first position in my opinion because it's a more beginner friendly option. And the last position is acro and air mode for more experienced pilots. There is a USB connector hidden at the bottom of the transmitter but unfortunately it doesn't act as a joystick device for a simulator which could potentially have made it a game changer because if you are a complete novice with no flying experience at all then getting some simulator time would help you a lot otherwise you would be lucky not to crash straight away. When I first saw this package I thought the model was the same as the Novice 2 but it isn't. For starters the Novice 2 uses two 1S LiPos in series and this one is 3S and uses a single XT30 connector which is better for current draw. I think the frame is the same so it bends very easily. It must be badly cut or poor quality carbon because it's 3mm thick and shouldn't bend like this. Although its dry weight is only 68 grams with the included 450 milliamp 3S LiPo it weighs 110 grams so it would have to be a very heavy crash on concrete before something breaks but you can buy the unibody as a spare part if it does. I don't like that there is no anti-slip mat to stop the battery ejecting and getting lost in a crash. You also have to bottom mount the LiPo because it's too big to fit on the top. The motors are Ishim branded 1203-5500kV and the props are the HQ 3x12s. The ESC and flight controller board is the same one that came on the Ishim Viz Whoop. So the ESCs are BL Halley S rated to 10 amps each with a 12 amp burst. The flight controller is an F4 flash with beta flight version 4.1.1 without JESC. I've left the setup how it comes out of the box to see if it can be easily flown straight away, which includes Ishin's own rates and PIDs. I do like that there is only one battery size option because it should have been easy for Ishin to tune, however they aren't exactly known for their attention to detail. Speaking of which, the two antennas for the built-in D8 receiver have just been fed loose through the top plate and are definitely going to get mangled in the props if you don't secure them down properly with cable ties. The VTX is power switchable up to 400 milliwatts via smart audio and has a built in DVR this time, which bypasses the model's on screen display. So, even though it's no substitute for a DVR in the goggles to find a lost model, you will at least have a breakup free recording in 720p 30fps. It doesn't come with a micro SD card though, so I'm using a Class 10 U3 32GB card. You have to stop the recording using the back button on the board, and if you forget to stop the recording and pull the battery out, then you will lose the video footage. The antenna for the VTX uses a micro UFL connector and isn't secured down, so again it could do with a better mounting option. Otherwise, it's going to get ripped off in a crash and possibly permanently damage the VTX. Just like the Novice 2, the top plate has built-in programmable LEDs as well as a physical loss model alarm. And the camera is the Cadex EOS 2 4x3 NTSC version. In the package you're given a 2-4S balance charger along with a power supply. You will most likely need a wall socket adapter for the country that you live in and it's not exactly a hobby grade charger either as it charges the LiPos from the balance port at 1.5 amps so it will be charging the 450mAh 3S LiPos at just over 3C instead of the 1C that we usually charge LiPos at with a hobby grade charger and you can only charge one LiPo at a time. Left in the box is a USB to DC adapter for charging up the goggles. You will want to make sure that you don't lose this cable because it's fairly bespoke and the main complaint of the EV800s is that they don't have a proper USB port for charging so you have to use the DC cable along with the provided USB wall adapter. You're given a separate JST to DC cable which will power the goggles from an external LiPo as well as a composite AV in cable which you wouldn't really use. It would have been much more helpful if the goggles had an AV out so that you could add an external DVR in the future.
They have included a circular polarised antenna for the goggles, which isn't correct, because the model has a linear antenna on it. So ironically, for once, a linear antenna would have given a better video signal than the circular polarised antenna that they've included. And lastly, you are given a spare set of props, two separate manuals. I should state that in the manual where it shows you how to bind the model, it has the bind command incorrect, so I'll put the correct bind command up on the screen for Beta Flight version 4.1.1. You're also given a wipe cloth as well as a carry pouch to keep all of that stuff in. So unfortunately the wind is about 20 mile per hour today and I really wasn't sure if the model would fly in these conditions but to my surprise it flew really well although I didn't do anything too fancy in the air because it's been about three weeks since I last flew. So combined with the unfamiliar transmitter and heavy winds I thought it was best to play it fairly safe. We're currently looking at the onboard DVR footage which I've edited to a 4x3 aspect ratio because it records in a 16x9 aspect aspect ratio at 1280 by 720p. So I'll quickly show you what the raw footage looks like off the card, but you can see that it's all stretched horizontally due to the camera on the model being a 4x3 aspect ratio. I have to say I was pretty impressed with the quality of the DVR footage which YouTube will most likely butcher but it actually records at 30 megabit so it's quite a generous data rate for 720p30 and the files don't split either so as long as you don't pull the battery out of the XT30 connector without stopping the recording you'll get an uninterrupted AVI file without any dropped frames. Now you might be wondering why I'm keeping the model in fairly close to myself and that's because I can see the RSSI value dropping as low as 30 dB through the goggles and you don't want to get any lower than that otherwise you'll get a fail safe and the model will fall out of the sky. But I've seen the built-in D8 receiver perform much better than this on the VizWoop. So I think the poor range can be put down to the transmitter rather than the receiver meaning that it's not going to be very good when you think about buying other models. I recorded the goggles DVR using my Fatshark HDO2s and they've recorded a better video signal than I was seeing through the EV800s, although they were just about usable with more breakup than you're seeing here. It's a sunny day and I couldn't see much jello through the goggles, which is surprising as Ishin components sometimes causes vibrations to show up in the video feed. There wasn't any electrical noise either. And even though I'm a little bit rusty here, I have to say I was very impressed with Ishin's tune and also their rates. I think I only got a little bit of prop wash from a deep dive that I did, as well as some buffeting, but I expected a lot worse, especially in 20 mile per hour wind. There was plenty of power there as well, in fact perhaps a little bit too much for a complete novice. I thought it would be really difficult to control with the transmitter's gimbals feeling loose on the ground, but once I was in the air it felt alright. My biggest issue with the earlier novice packages was that the included transmitter and goggles made the model more difficult to fly than a decent hobby grade setup and would definitely put people off going further into the hobby. It's all about having a great first experience, but this one is just about ticking all of the boxes. The current meter wasn't quite right which I expected because it was the same on the Ishin VizWoop. But other than that I think I would recommend this package as long as you're okay with the poor range of the transmitter and the fact that it's not very future proof. Because once you've got the bug for FPV you'll want a better transmitter, goggles and charger anyway to use with other stuff. And I wouldn't recommend this package to someone who has never flown anything before. You want to either have a decent simulator setup or at least be able to fly a cheap disposable toy before considering spending the amount of money they are asking for this package. The flight time was decent as around five minutes so I'll put a link in the video description as well as a pinned comment if you wish to get one. And as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe. Cheers.